The man we speak to today needs no introduction. Under his stewardship, he grew the YTL Group from a single entity in 1985 to a conglomerate spanning five listed companies and business interests in Asia and Europe. His name is Tan Sri Francis Yeo, and he's the CEO of YTL Group of Companies. Tan Sri, a very warm welcome to you. Let's kick it off with, yes, your new 4G network, which you seem to be betting the house on. Let's kick, kick, let's kick off with an update on coverage and uh, how, how the, uh, the, uh, the coverage plan is going. Well, we, uh, the population coverage, we, uh, we have now covered 65%, and uh, we, we hope to, to cover by 80% at the end of this year. How is that plan going? Very well, very well. Very well indeed. Uh, first and foremost, about 100,000 people are on our, our 4G network enjoying and uh, surfing the net, doing YouTubes. For example, they saw the tsunami ahead of CNN uh, when it happened through even our bus phone. And uh, this time around, because the internet community, Facebook and uh, uh, all those uh, uh, tweeters community got wind of, of the tsunami very quick and put it on the YouTubes, downloaded and a lot of people saw it. And created a phenomenon in our food court in uh, KL with a small little bus phone and about 100 people looking at a small screen because suddenly they can see a tsunami in a mobile way, which is amazing. Yeah, certainly the, uh, the tech community seems to be quite uh, all, uh, all abuzz about uh, over the, uh, the, the Yes 4G service. Um, the thing is, right now you, you have a certain promise to, to, to cover the population in West Malaysia, but what yeah. about East Malaysia? What about plans to go there? East Malaysia meaning uh, Sabah, Sarawak? We don't have a, a, a license to go there yet. But we will apply. You know. uh, are there any pl- are there any timeline details that you can share with us? I think we'll cover Peninsular Malaysia first, which I think uh, mobile internet has arrived. Peninsular Malaysia has a lot of people also on the east coast of Malaysia. I hope they will get get uh, this powerful 4G network that will really enhance the way they educate themselves, the way they work, the way they entertain themselves. Uh, you have to taste it. I think mean, it's very difficult to describe the 4G network. I'm addicted to it and 100,000 people have served it, enjoying it. Ask them whether they can get out of a 4G network. It's almost like we watch color TV and it's very difficult to switch back to black and white. Okay, well, I guess part of the, the appeal about the 4G network is obviously the, the download speeds, yeah? How, what, what kind of speeds can people enjoy? Well, the, it's all uh, well advertised through the bloggers and all that. If you, you just can take a swipe at any blogger. Recently, a uh, blogger took a uh, measurement on the way from KL to Penang, and uh, he wrote all of that, and he, he gave evidence of that. So you would see uh, we are actually wanting transparency to tell people our speed. Whereas if you see the ecosystem of the 3G world globally, even in Singapore recently, the government has asked the, the 3G telcos to reveal their speeds uh, because many people complain that they are m- too much throttling and they are, they are, they are not uh, uh, revealing uh, its speed. And, and the Ofcom in Britain just forced everyone to sign a code of uh, uh, ethics to de- reveal their speed because of these various complaints. While people are trying to hide their speeds, we are trying to advertise our speeds. That's the difference. We ask every blogger, we, it's in our flagship store, go and check our speeds at anywhere you go write about it. So I think this is best told when people actually use it, right? Best rather than the, me trying to, to 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 assure you. I think ask the people who use it. Well, at the time we spoke to Wing K Lee last year um, from your from the WiMAX division. He heads up uh, the unit there. He talked about how five times the uh, the three G speeds were, were possible. At that's, least that's I, I think for half. many people it's at least five times, sometimes ten times, depend on. On, on what you use. Okay, well, let's go back to the investment part of the equation, Tantri. Uh, you're supposed to roll out um, the whole network with about two and a half billion ringgit of, mm. of, of investment. Mm. Uh, right now, you've spent about one and a half billion of, of ringgit, yeah, yeah, in terms of rolling it out. Uh, is this is this target still on track to spend two and a half? Or, Definitely. Or, yeah? We're not looking back. And uh, the exponential growth of our uh, people who have enjoyed the network and those who have heard about it is growing. Our bus phone is, is is flying off the shelves now. I think people begin to understand my joke, you know. Uh, people put uh, two, three hundred ringgit on a phone and a tax service. Let's remind ourselves in a hyper tax. That's 15 years ago. We're still taxing in a boring black and white way. People have gone to multimedia like, you know, 
the whole world has gone the multimedia way to communicate. Yet in this country, we are talking about text and, and phones. And phones at 15 cents a minute is extremely expensive. So I think mobile internet has arrived. If you are going to throw 300 ringgit a month for phone and text, why don't you give us 150 ringgit? You can do 10,000 emails. You can surf the net. You can go on YouTube. You can call as well. Uh, free so many 450 ringgit on our mobile uh, internet network. So I think I want people to wake up to use the power of the 4G that's arrived. Our 4G network can make Steve Jobs FaceTime come true, conference call. That takes three megabytes per second, and that is what I'm trying to wake our country up. This is blessed country that has got a 4G network that can make FaceTime work. In the world. Okay, you talked about uh, 100,000 subscribers on your roll now. Um, that's about three months' worth of rollout, mm. rollout time, Tantri. Uh, what are internal targets for, for subscribers? Obviously, you come out at a very competitive time in the landscape. Well, you see, uh, like I'm saying, if you think mobile phones are important and you will leave two, three hundred ringgit and think nothing of it, either you're a businessman or, or whatever, and everybody does that, maybe you're worried about a call. Uh, from a hospital or relatives or police or emergency, why wouldn't you pay 300 ringgit or so to do something more powerful? So I think every mobile phone person must understand at least, give the 4G a shot and learn about it. And for 300 ringgit, maybe you can do so much awesomely more. And then it's urgent. Then they will realize they'll stop just listening to just one ringing tone, which is the phone. They have to ring and respond to five Find sorts of tones like uh, app, WhatsApp tones, uh, email tones, and that's just as urgent. It's just that uh, there's no uh, power in the network before to wake up all these apps like what Steve Jobs wants. Now with our 4G network, every video and the f uh, accompanied by voice can be uh, passed through the network uh, for four megabytes or five megabytes easily. And it takes seconds and that's it. You're, you're away with it. So I think that's very important for people to understand that 4G can wake applications up in a very multimedia way. No, you're right, Tantri. And there's two things why people would, would want to migrate to your fl uh, platform, which is A, speed, and B, coverage, which is, uh, I mean, a yes, is touted as the, the nationwide service. Um, given that's the case and given how, how fast you say the yes uh, platform is, can you commit to a subscriber target by the end of 2011 and, and beyond, in fact? No, I think I need help from everybody. I think I, uh, through a radio station, through, through everybody. I, I think the best is to test it, give it a go, and, and understand that if you're going to put money down on urgency for phone and text, why don't you do it for mobile internet? For, for the same amount of money, you can do awesomely more. Why don't everybody try that? And then I, I, I think the subscriber number will take care of itself. What yeah. if internally, and I'm sure internally you do have your subscriber targets, what if internally you don't meet these targets? Will you, as a conglomerate, as the YTL group, continue to stay committed to this 4G internet path? I, I think there's no such thing as uh, I wouldn't meet the target because I've learned something uh, in all my years. When you provide a very valuable commodity at a very uh, reasonable price, people want it. Be it water, electricity, anything. And I'm used to that. If I do a hutong, uh, where I get all the hawkers for three, four generations and sell it at less than 10 ringgit average per plate, do I worry that a million people will come? No, I don't worry. A million people do come even on his first year of uh, opening. So when you are sure about what you're offering, all right, that people need at a very reasonable price, you're not worried. This is the internet world where we actually go on what we call a, a abundance system of, of, of uh, thinking, where we, we want the average man to gain from the technology, as opposed to a scarcity monopoly, where if you've got special monopolies, like cigarettes or something, you want to not to give the average man. Uh, you want to charge a premium. I think the internet world is very good in that sense that you can download things free, YouTube's, and you can do Gmail free. I think that's the system I encourage. That's why, dear, we like to give everybody 
using our ability to do technology for the average man and use it for the empowerment of their lives. Of course, Wing Lee also suggested the, uh, his backers, obviously the YTL group is 60% in, in YTL uh, comms. Um, he's talked about how they are committed and you guys are committed to the business. What happens if there's challenges come into the picture? For example, in terms of um, risks to network expansion, what about things like uh, all-out price wars? I, I think at the end of the day, uh, when we spend $2.5 billion, you may be aware or not, that this is one-sixth of the U.S. budget spent on 4G. So this is a very serious commitment to a country. The U.S., uh, because of their vested interest in the 3G world space, they don't want to go into 4G. So the whole commitment of the 4G, despite Obama's push for broader band and all that, they, they committed some, and we are spending a sixth of the U.S. budget, and that's the U.S. with uh, the Steve Jobs of the world, the Googles of the world, where internet was born there, and and we are spending a sixth of what they spend on the 4G network. So I think I'm very committed. So if I'm that committed, I am sure I will succeed.